Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And today we're going to talk about The Night House, the latest film by David Bruckner, who some of you may know as the director of The Signal and Amateur Night from VHS, and the upcoming Hellraiser movie. The uh, remake that has been just dated for like 20 years and, uh, and we're hoping <laughs> we're hoping turns out we're to hoping. be good good director so um, we're hoping but obviously it could turn out to be crap but we'll find out soon we've been um, burned before but here's the good news uh the night house is a movie that i actually thoroughly enjoyed um it is a uh is a very dark movie about a school teacher whose husband has recently committed suicide and she finds herself haunted both literally and figuratively by her husband and his many secrets. Yeah, um, she's haunted by his absence. Yes, yes. And um, we'll go more into the spoilers about those secrets and about whether or not she's actually being haunted or whether or not it's just, you know, a In metaphor. Her head. Yeah. Um, uh, because this movie is a mystery. Um, it is, you're watching her kind of figure things out and unfold as it goes on. Um, and so there actually is spoilers here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, <laughs> you know, there is shit to be spoiled. You know, and I, and I definitely don't want to take that away from you because I was thoroughly engaged in trying to figure out what was going on in this movie. Yeah, you, you know? it starts out, you think you have an idea of where it's headed. Yeah. Because it's that classic setup, person alone in a house, recent tragedy. Mm-hmm. There, there are certain things that are going to happen, and they do. And then it takes a left turn. It does. It does. Um, it takes a couple left turns, um, but the, the the first one's definitely like the yeah, surprise. That's, that's the big one. That's the first big, big fucking like twist it takes. Um, so, so naturally, just from that alone, you should have an idea of how kind of dark this movie gets because we're, we're talking about a woman dealing with a not only the death of a husband but the suicide of a husband which yeah. is pretty heavy fucking stuff well it's the it's the whole point of the movie like yeah. the whole metaphor of the movie is dealing with being the person who survives a suicide um being the person being the loved one of a person who committed suicide yeah, yeah. You well, know. also, well, also a little bit kind of being the one that survives a bit, like that yeah. you're trying to go to, because yeah, because even in the movie there is a important plot point that um, uh, at one point when she was younger she did die for a couple minutes, you know. Yeah. Um, it's actually like part of why she she doesn't believe in ghosts or an afterlife and anything like that. So everything that's happening to her right now is very weird because uh, she she died once, like for a couple seconds, and there was nothing at the other end, you know. So like there is a little bit of like 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 survivor's guilt happening here too. As, yeah. As well as yeah. As well as the anger of 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 a loved one uh, uh, killing themselves and being like, why'd you go? You know. Yeah. And, and a whole bunch of stuff. So it, it it's some it's some dark dark shit. But what I thought was interesting about the approach to this movie is that despite it being that dark, it still allowed itself to be funny at times. Yes. Like. Yeah. Um, the main character largely deals with her grief when interacting with other people. Privately, she gets drunk, she cries, she, she, she goes through the motions. But when she's dealing with other people, she's a very sarcastic and snarky person. Yeah. Um, and it is thoroughly entertaining to watch her make other people squirm when they're being little bitches. And she's sitting there like, my husband just fucking killed himself. I don't have patience for this. So, yeah, no, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock person. them down a peg with my snark and sarcasm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hunter, uh, got a C, but like he said, you yeah. didn't bring these assignment in the last day of class. Yeah. He said you weren't here. Yeah, I wasn't here because my husband had just committed suicide and I had to go identify the body for the cops. So, I've been kind of busy. <laughs> so, I, so I really don't care about your son's, son's grade. Grades. So what do you want? You want a B? You want a B? Oh, no, you want an A. All right, we can yeah, do this. We can All do right, that. fine. Let's, that's fine. No, no, B is fine. All right, All right fine. B it is. you say? All right, are we done here? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the actress, um, I think her name is Rebecca Hall. Um, she's actually, uh, I mainly know her as being the, the ex-girlfriend in Iron Man 3 that... Uh, Fucking uh Oh yeah. Yeah. That 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 develops the uh the ah, fuck um 
the, 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 the extremists. Curious, yeah, the extremists. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mainly know her from that and a couple other things. And she's great in this movie. Oh yeah. Like I, I watch this movie and I go like, I hope she does more horror movies because she is, she is, she is a joy to watch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she, she just has one of those, those, those charismas that you just can't stop watching. Well, she, she is able to go from like really sincere to like Aubrey Plaza level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> snarky. And I, and, it's, and I appreciated the movie having her do that because it like even though it's still dark and kind of sad because you know she's lashing out at people because she's angry and upset and hurting, it did lighten the mood a little bit in scenes when things were really heavy. Yeah, you know, so like it gave a little bit of levity so that you weren't just like like down in the murk the entire time, you know. So yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the night house. I, I do think it goes in a satisfactory direct satisfactory it direction. Yeah, it's really good with its mystery. Um, I think the main character is a, a great joy to watch. And uh, having watched this movie, I am now like again even more looking forward to seeing what he does with Hellraiser. Oh you yeah, know? definitely. I'm yeah. like um, Hellraiser could end up being bad, but like watching this movie and seeing his twist on a, a person haunted by a dead loved one story and like doing some things I hadn't necessarily seen No, I yeah, did a lot of things I'd never seen before, you yeah. know? And going like, okay, well maybe he can breathe some new life into Hellraiser, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, like it all, it all comes down to, if his remake of Hellraiser sucks, I don't think I'm gonna hold it against him. Because... No, no, because that, that it's a huge shoot. Of, it's kind of like um, when uh, when they remade Evil Dead, right? Right. I was like, this, this, this if this turns out to be good, it's a miracle. And it was, it a, was miracle. a miracle. Yeah. It was a goddamn miracle. Same thing with Hellraiser, you know. Yeah, I'm hoping for I'm hoping for another Evil Dead remake level. Yeah. You're just hoping. Yes, definitely. Oh. Well, <laughs> let's move on to spoilers. Yeah, let's do that. Oh shit. I forgot to mention this in the non-spoiler section, so I'm gonna edit this into the non-spoiler section. Um, uh, the movie is currently available on various streaming platforms to rent. There, none of the other like free streaming platforms have it right now, so you're gonna have to rent it. It's, I think it's like 14 bucks, so it is a little, little pricey, it's a little pricey, but, but it it's is worth it. It yeah. is totally worth it, and you should definitely check it out. And uh, uh, w with that said, uh, back to the spoilers. All right, this is where we could really talk about the movie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to talk about like the crux of this movie uh, without spoiling it because um, over the course of this movie, she is haunted by her husband's presence, um, like or the lack thereof. Um, and you're not quite sure whether or not he, he, she's actually experiencing some sort of like spooky encounter with his ghost or whether or not she is just you know, having these dreams because uh, she's grieving. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> especially since so often she would come back to something later and it would not be the way it was uh, earlier. Yeah. Shit moves in the house. Yeah. You know, like she'd see footsteps and then she'd come back later and the footsteps are gone. You know, things yeah. like that. But like the first thing that happens where she's like, huh? Is she goes through um, his phone because it's in his effects. Yeah. And there are pictures of a woman that looks like her that she doesn't remember being taken. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And she's like, the fuck? Like, I don't yep. remember this. Looks exactly like her from behind anyway. Yeah, <clears throat> and of course there's this big question of as to why he committed suicide because there's no explanation. Yeah, that's what kind of starts her on this journey is she's simultaneously trying to get over it by um, getting rid of a bunch of his stuff and by going through his stuff, she finds some weird shit like those pictures. Yeah. Um, where, where she's just like, um, well, what's going on? And this leads her into the question, why did he commit suicide? And he left a really weird, obscure note and she understood what half of it means, but not the rest of it. Right. right. Cause she left the, he left this weird note about how like, um, you um, were right. Nothing is after you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and and, and, this, and something like the scary man's gone, or something. It was, it was weird. Yeah, weird. yeah. <laughs> and so and so she's just like, well, what does this all mean? She's trying to figure it out. She goes through her pictures, and she ends up finding on his computer a whole bunch of pictures of a whole bunch of women that look vaguely vaguely like her, but aren't her. Yeah. 
Um, and so it, 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 first you now you're at the point where it's just like, okay, was he having an affair with multiple women? Um, and so that's like the first kind of red herring you have. Yeah. Is was it an affair? Um, as the story goes on and she encounters one of those women, uh, it starts to become clearer. She doesn't quite she hasn't quite figured it out yet, but as a viewer, it starts to become clearer that maybe her boyfriend was a serial killer. Yeah. Because like th there's this whole conversation where he uh, he talks to one of the neighbors about one of his urges, right? And the neighbor admits this that like he had this conversation with him, and like you're you're, you're thinking at first like oh like like sexual urges, like I'm sleeping with all these women. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the context. I'm really into bondage. I really <clears throat> like hacking people in two. It was in the context of him uh, interacting with another woman that looked like him, looked like her, but wasn't her. Um, uh, but it becomes clear that like it seems like he may be killing these women. Yeah. Um, and it gets even weirder because she has a dream of a house across the lake that's exactly like hers, but it's the it's the inverse. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the inverse. image. And she finds plans yeah. for a house that is the inverse of theirs <clears throat> somewhere. As well as occult books. Yeah. And that's when you really start to go, okay, now we're going in a weirder direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, okay, <laughs> now we're going into the supernatural. Yeah, yeah, you know. absolutely. Um, and she finds across the lake a, a, a unfinished house that he was obviously building that is the exact layout of her house, but in a mirror image of it. You know, everything's backwards. Yep. Um, and eventually in that house, she finds body. Yes, in, under the floorboards. So obviously boyfriend was killing some women. They were all women that looked like her. And now the question is, why? why? Yeah. And why not her too? Like, why, why was she exempt from this? What's what's going on here? Yeah. And why did he kill himself? You know, so the whole movie ends up culminating in her returning to, I guess, what you would call the dream world. But in this movie, turns out to be more of like a spiritual world, um, like a gateway to another. <laughs> yeah, yeah, side. yeah. It's like there's yeah, there's like there's a flip side um, in which she ends up in the mirror household um, uh, across the lake. And uh, she basically witnesses in this her husband killing a bunch of women that are all hiding in the house yeah. one by one in different ways, in gnarly ways, um, while a voice keeps talking to her, you know, using his voice. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it tries to eventually convince her to commit suicide. Yep. Um, just like he did in the lake with a gun, pow, you know? Um, but what becomes clear as the movie goes on is it turns out he, he was killing these women because when she died years before, she caught the interest to some creature on the other side. Yeah. Some entity that wanted her and wanted to bring her back to the other side. And for some reason, it was haunting her husband and taking over her husband. And so instead of killing his wife so that she would go back to the other side, he was instead trying to trick the creature by sending him women that looked like her. Yeah. And yeah. the fake house was a fake out so that the creature would... Yeah. Not realize it wasn't in the right house. Because in the occult books it was reading is that sometimes you can trick spiritual entities with mazes and yeah. confusing architecture, which is why he designed his house that way and why he ultimately designs the mirror house in a similar way, you know? Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and basically like the movie ends with, uh, she has a friend that uh, is one of her coworkers at the school she works at. Um, who obviously cares a lot about her. Yeah. Like, it was to the point where I almost thought it was going to go into, like, the lesbian Yeah, direction. yeah, me too. Me <laughs> like, too. for a yeah. minute there. Because she cares that much for her. Um, but I'm pretty sure that character is already married and has kids. Yeah, well, it, whether or not it, yeah. was, it was it it was was anything sexual is really not the point. Um, but, like, she, she ends up uh, uh, arriving at the house, uh, realizing that she's not there, and then seeing her on the lake, and then running out and screaming for her at the lake. Um, and basically pulls her out of, of, of the dreamscape that she's in so she doesn't kill herself. And, and uh, then they embrace and the movie kind of ends right there um, with her having uh, defeated the monster by uh, not giving in. Yeah. You know, 
Um, and but of course, at the end, it's like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. I can wait. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna come back. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna try to get with her again. Um, and it's been trying to lure her the entire time by pretending to be her husband. So she wasn't actually being uh, haunted by the husband, although she was in, in a certain sense. Yeah. It was this entity taking on his face to try to get her to finally kill herself. Yeah, and one of the things that's really cool about the creature is that it, it, it exists in empty spaces. Yes. You will not understand what I mean until you see the movie. Yeah, yeah, it does this really cool thing with architecture and the way it depicts the creature that, again, like he said, you're just gonna have to see it because I do not know how to describe it. I, I have, I think I may have seen something like this maybe once before, but I can't think of where. <laughs> but like, yeah, it was yeah. truly- But weird. I haven't, yeah, but I haven't seen it done this way, definitely. And it's that aspect um, that really makes me go like, oh man, with that kind of creativity, I'm really interested to seeing what, what he does with the Hellraiser, right? Yeah, exactly. You know? Because that was a really unique way to depict the entity because... Well, it's like you, you with this, you can tell that uh, this director can really uh, depict, like, t making a, a right turn they've always made and then all of a sudden you're somewhere else. And yeah. Like, Wait a minute. 100%. What just happened? 100 percent you know so when the walls start to fucking open in hellraiser hopefully it'll be really good oh man i'm I, i'm excited even though i know there's a chance it could break my heart oh know? yeah yeah you yeah. know um it's it, well it's one of those everything looks good but been, I'm, I'm just not willing to trust <laughs> yeah yeah i can't trust again like how many times has it been eight like, at what point <laughs> is it okay for me to go, I don't trust a man? Exactly. Yeah. So I know I've been mainly talking about the mystery so far because that's kind of like the core of the movie that really gets you hooked and the main character keeps you going because she's so entertaining to watch and she's so engaging and you really care about her. Um, but the, the other thing I want to say about this movie is that it's also legitimately freaky at points. Oh, yeah. Um, especially, like, when you start getting to, like, the weird things it does with the entity and the way it shows itself. There's some really good scares that actually did make me jump a couple times. Yeah, yeah, it's very <laughs> you know? effective. You know, like, good jump scares as well as just good creepy shit happening. Because there, there's yeah. also scenes where, like, you see things in the background that are, are not quite right until they confirm they're not quite right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, one of the biggest problems, a lot of people, like, blamed uh, jump scares for things not being scary anymore. And I was oh, no. like, no, 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 no. The problem with the jump scare is this. This is the difficulty of the jump scare. It looks easy. It's cheap, but it only works if you know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You actually have to craft it, you know? And I think yeah. this movie does a really good job crafting the moments. There are some moments that I don't even think were intended as jump scares, but like, like, like your wife jumped. Oh yeah, you know, like there yeah. wasn't a loud music sting, there wasn't a whatever, but it did make her jump. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. We just, uh, yeah okay. Exactly. Right. You know. Yeah, sorry about. That. Okay. Yeah, a little tense there. You know. Exactly. So like this movie's got a really tense atmosphere, and and it's it's, it's nice and suspenseful in that way, um, and it's got a great mystery. So it's got a bit of everything. You know, I. I I highly recommend the Night House. I I think it's yes. a legitimately good movie. I don't know what else. To, I I don't know what else it is that we can spoil. It's just overall a very 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 good movie. One hundred percent. Um, I uh, it does everything I, really well and really right. I don't even have any. Like, and the problem is, is it. The creature is literally indescribable. Yeah, yeah. You know, he like, managed to depict an indescribable creature in an indescribable way. Yeah, yeah. Like, goddamn. So, like, bravo, bravo, bravo. That is magnificent. You kudos know, to you. It, yeah, whoever came up with the conceit of yeah. how to depict that, just kudos to you. Kudos to your effects team. Kudos to your design team. Everyone, you all deserve fucking praise. Yeah. Well, like after after this, if like. If he was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna adapt House of Leaves. Mm -hmm. I would be like, okay. Oh, no, perfect, perfect. Okay. Go for it. I'd be interested to see how you'd bring that to life. And I know you'd do it in an interesting way. You yeah. Know? Uh, so anyway, uh, my fellow Gorehounds, um, I dug the hell out of this movie. And with that said, where can I find you, Count Jack? Well, you can find me on Twitter, at Counting Jack. You can find me at twitch.tv every Sunday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can also follow me on Instagram 
at Satanic Jack. And you know what? Yeah. I think I need to change up the order that I announce those. Okay. Because it feels like after the Twitch thing, like Instagram feels like kind of an afterthought. Yeah, you I know? can see that. Yeah. Like, hey, it's a fucking Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, feel free to switch it up. That's fine. All right. So you can find me at Counting Jack on Twitter. Satanic Jackula on Instagram, and you can also find me on twitch.tv at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Thursday and Sundays at count underscore Jackula. There. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. What about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Spider Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And with all that said, my fellow gorehounds, um, what's a good hashtag for this one? Like, hmm. Mm. How, how about how about um, nowhere man? Ooh, hashtag, hashtag nowhere, nowhere, nowhere man. man. All right, if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to put in a comment below and be sure to comment below hashtag nowhere man so that I know, Jack knows, and the rest of the world knows that you watched this vlog all the way through. Also, it helps out my analytics, so uh, the more comments, the better. Uh, so get into conversations with other commenters below, because that also helps me. It's engagement, my friends. Engagement is the name of the game. <laughs> and with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we're going to try to record one more vlog, and uh, that'll be that for this week. He's a real nowhere man, new in all his nowhere plans, thinking all his nowhere rhymes for nobody. <laughs>